starting a window. <clears throat> so please let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, po, sir. This is right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for that. So our discussion, our subject for discussion today is about auditing theory. So, aware naman kayo doon na yung pag sinabi kong auditing theory, ito yung auditing and assurance principle. So, before we go deeper with the topic auditing theory, so siguro kailang pag-usapan muna natin what is auditing. Ano kaya sa tingin ninyo? Yung personal muna ninyo. Opinion, ano yung auditing para sa inyo. So, ano kaya? Anyone from the class, ano yung auditing para sa inyo? So, anyone, can you still hear me? If you can, uh, if you can hear me, uh, please press 1. So, please press 1 if you can hear me. All right. So, all right. So, tatlo pa lang. So, yung iba hindi yata nakikinig pa. Okay. So, Gabriel, Gabriel. Is yes, please, sir. Oh, all right. Nag-raise ng hand. Uh, okay. <laughs> personal, ano lang po, opinion. So, right. yung una ko po kasing narinig yung auditing, for me, ito po yung, syempre, uh, somehow connected siya with accounting, di ba, sir? Kasi, when we, after matapos na yung financial statement, need pa siyang i-examine ng another tao, which is supposedly, hindi siya yung gumawa ng uh, financial statement para ma-make sure na walang bias yung pagkaka-audit. So, basically, dinodouble check yung mga figures dun sa financial statement whether may mali or may mga kahinahinalang figures or uh, dun sa mismong financial statement. That's why meron po tayong auditing. Yan, sir. Okay, so that's correct, no? So, tama yung sinabi ni Gabriel na ang auditing is related sa accounting. So, tama naman. So, uh, ang akin, ang personal opinion ko, yung accounting sa auditing magkapatid sila. So, related sila sa bawat isa. So, <clears throat> ano pa yung sabi ni, uh, ni Gabriel na ang auditing daw is to check or to verify kung tama ba yung nandoon sa financial statement. So, mamaya mapag-aaralan natin yan kasi may tinatawag tayong representation. So, Tayo bilang auditor, kasi tama yung sinabi ni Gabriel na kailangan i-verify, i-check kung tama ba yun nandoon sa financial statement. So, ibig sabihin, chine-check natin bilang auditor kung tama ba yung representation ng management na nag a doon sa financial statement. So, yun yung sinasabi ni Gabriel. So, tama po yun. So, thank you for that, uh, Gab. So, aside from Gab, sino pa yung ibang nag ng hand? para may nakita ko kanina. So anyone, any uh, anyone from the class? So any other student from the class? Sino pa yung my my personal opinion? All right. Okay, si Luella. Luella. Then next is Nicole. Luella mo. Um, yung opinion ko po about auditing is ano po, um, ito po yung ginagawa ng isang auditor kung para malaman ay, na um, binibigay po yan yung opinion niya if ay dun sa about sa financial statements ng isang company um, kung yung ano po, kung yung financial statement ng company is um, in accordance with financial um, framework po yan po siya Yes, that's correct also. Kasi di ba yung mga auditor, nagbibigay sila ng sarili nilang opinion. So tama po yun. So i-connect din natin sa sinabi ni Gab, yung sinabi ni Luella. Kasi sabi ni Luella, nag-render daw ng opinion ng auditor para masabi na fair yung financial statement. So uh, para masabi mong fair ang financial statement, kailangan objective ka bilang isang auditor, hindi ka na-influensyahan, walang bias, uh, may sinusunod kang standard. So, kahit anong mangyari, independent si auditor para makapag-render siya ng tamang opinion. So, yun yung sinasabi ni Luella, yun din sinasabi ni 
Gab. Okay, si Nicole naman. Nicole at... In connection lang din po sa sagot po nila, uh, para sa akin po, yung opinion po ng auditor is magdadagdag po siya ng value and credibility sa financial statements po to assure na re reliable po lahat ng information na ginamit po doon. That's correct. So, uh, ang auditor, tama po yun, tama yung sinabi rin ni Nicole. It adds credibility, it adds value to the financial statements. Kasi, halimbawa, gumawa lang ng financial statement ang management. Gusto nila mag-loan sa banko. Sa so, tingin niyo ba, i, i, uh, a assist sila ng banko kung magbibigay lang sila ng unaudited financial statement? Hindi. Kasi yung financial statement, hindi siya reliable by itself. So, paano siya magiging reliable? Kailangan may third party na hindi related doon sa company na nagbibigay ng opinion na fair ang financial statements. Na dapat uh, tama yung information na nakalagay doon in accordance with the generally accepted accounting principle. Kaya... Sa mga banks, ang hinahanap nila yung audited financial statements, hindi uh, unaudited financial statements. Kasi ang dapat makita ng banko, ng mga ba lenders, uh, yung uh, credibility ng financial statements. Kung tama ba yung mga nakalagay doon, hindi mali, hindi mali yung information, uh, hindi siya naka-incline sa gusto ng management. Diba? Kasi meron ng mga scandals before, di ba? So, kung maalala nyo sa operations auditing natin, uh, sa ka-operations auditing nyo with your other professor, napag-aralan natin yung mga famous accounting scandals. Kung saan yung mga uh, malalaking company nun sa US, uh, nagkaroon sila ng connivance with their auditor. So, ito yung gusto ng client, ito yung gusto kong makita, ganito, ganyan. Gusto ko mataas yung sales, gusto ko maliit yung expenses para malaki yung net profit. So, si auditor naman nila, nung time na yon o oh, sige, okay lang. So, pumayag. So, sinayin yung, oh, yung financial statements, nagbigay ng opinion, independent auditor's opinion, and then ginamit ng mga uh, companies mag-loan sa bank. So, ano nangyari? Hindi totoo yung financial statement, hindi yun yung totoong... Dapat naka-reflect doon. So, fraudulent FS yun. So, ano nangyari? Lumabas yung katotohanan. Diba? Dahil mabaho yung financial statements nila, hindi maiiwasan na lalabas talaga yung totoong amoy ng uh, ginawa ng company. So, pumutok na yung issue. Lumabas. Nag-collapse yung business. Dahil nag-collapse yung business, walang mababayaran, uh, nag-collapse din yung Uh, financial system doon sa Amerika. Kasi yung mga banko, malalaki yung niloan sa kanila. So, meron na yung chain effect. So, kung yung mga binigyan, mga bin, tinahiraman ng mga banks, eh mga malalaking companies, syempre, tiwalang-tiwala sila noon na, ay, kaya yung bayaran, malaking company to, maraming pera yan. Pero, dahil fraudulent yung financial statements, uh, ang akala ng mga banks, eh, kumikita talaga yung company na yon yun pala, pabagsak na. And then, nung, nalam, nung nalaman nila na pabagsak na, wala na silang mare-recover. So, ang tendency, magko-collapse din yung mga banks so na, na hiniraman. So, ganun yung mangyayari. Kaya that's why, uh, until now, kailangan ng mga stakeholders yung audited financial statements para masabing totoo yung nakalagay doon sa Uh, financial information ng isang company or ng isang entity. So, that is correct. So, tama po yun. Tama po lahat ng inyong sinabi. Alright. Okay. So, let me share another screen. Alright. Hi, class. Can you still uh, uh, 
hear me? Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, po. All right. Can you uh, see now my screen? Apa. Yes, All right. Okay. So, okay. So, yes, pagpasensyahan niyo na. I'm still using Excel up to now. So, hinahanap ko kasi yung aking uh, notes. Uh, kaso hindi ko mahanap. So, i-discuss ko na lang sa inyo through Excel. So, if you're still listening, if you're still listening, can you please press number two? So, just to see if you are all listening. So, this will serve as your attendance. Diba? So, naka-record to. Makikita natin yan kung sino yung mga. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, ngayon, ay kanina pala, napag-usapan natin yung overview ng auditing. Kung ano yung auditing para sa inyo. So, syempre, dahil mga BS accountancy kayo, I am expecting na magagaling talaga kayo, no? So, which is totoo naman, magagaling kayo. Nakaabot na nga kayo ng uh, fourth year, di ba? So, fourth year na kayo, nakaabot na kayo sa auditing. So, congratulations. Well deserved. Kayang-kaya niya yan. So, let's discuss the formal uh, discussion about auditing. So, ano nga ba ang auditing? <clears throat> Nakikita po ba natin ang Excel? Yes, yes po. po. All right. So, what is auditing? Uh, I-discuss natin yung auditing based sa kanyang verbatim. All right. So, verbatim of auditing. Ano yung sabi ng auditing? Ay, paano pinaliwanag ang auditing? According to American Accounting Association, so according to American Accounting Association daw, auditing is a systematic. So, systematic process. Diba? Ob objectively, obtaining. Ano yung ino-obtain? Ano yung ino-obtain sa audit? Evidences. So, auditing is, system is a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences regarding assertions. So, regarding assertions about economic actions and events. So, dito muna tayo ha. Ayan. So, anong sabi ng American Accounting Association? Ang auditing daw is a systematic process. Why is it called a systematic process? Bakit kaya naging systematic process ang auditing? Diba nagkaroon tayo ng overview kanina? Bakit naman siya, bakit siya tinawag na uh, it's a systematic process. Why is auditing a systematic process? So anyone from the class, why is it uh, auditing a systematic process? So can, you can, all right. So Nicole, Nicole, you can. Auditing is a systematic process po. Based po sa word na process, meron po siyang order and steps po na kailangan gawin. Hindi po siya basta-basta na uh, nag-audit ka lang po. Kailangan po meron po siyang way po or process nga po. That's correct. So, systematic process, that means to say there is an order, di ba? So, tama po yan. There is an order or steps na sinusunod yung mga auditor kapag nagkakandak ng audit. So, tama po yun. Ano pa yung Ibang, ano, uh, another idea. I think Jean May is uh, raising her hand kanina, no? So, Jean May. Uh, tinawag po siyang process kasi po um, kapag nagkoconduct po ng, ano, ng financial statements, kailangan po yung auditor may series of steps po para ma-identify ma po nila o ma-ensure po nila yung mga potential risk na pwede nilang ma-i-address po sa isang financial statement po. Yes, that's also correct. So, merong series of steps or procedures na sinusunod si auditor. Bakit kaya yon? Para masabing tama yung ginagawa niya, di ba? Kasi kung walang, walang procedure, walang process na sinusunod si auditor, sa tingin nyo, 
uh, magiging perfect ba? Magiging okay ba yung kanyang audit? Sa, di ba sa atin? Kung magpa, uh, kung mag-outing tayo, pag mag-outing tayo, ano kaya? Uh, pagpaplanuhan ba natin or hindi? Gusto, for example, punta tayong Boracay. Lahat tayo, punta tayong Boracay. Uh, tomorrow na, may pera si Sir. Ano na, uh, libre na lahat kayo. So, tomorrow na agad. So, sa tingin nyo, pagpaplanuhan ba natin yun or hindi? Di ba kailangan natin pagplanuhan? Kasi bakit natin kailangan pagplanuhan? Kasi ngayon, di ba, merong mga uh, travel restrictions. Ano yung mga kailangan gawin para makapasok doon sa isang area? So, kailangan ng swab test, kailangan ng ano, ng kung fully vaccinated na tayo. So, kailangan dadalhin natin yon, di ba? At mas magpapaswab test tayo today. Para bukas, ready na yung swab test results. Ano pa? Siyempre, yung itinerary natin. Di ba? Ano pa? Yung saan yung mga pupuntahan natin, anong gagawin natin, kung meron tayong team building, kung may anong kakainin natin. So, lahat yun, pinagpaplanuhan natin. Kasi kung wala tayong plano, baka magkagulo, di ba? So, magkakagulo yung ano natin, yung ating uh, outing, yung ating travel, di ba? Kasi mamaya, kung wala tayong plano, kung saan-saan na lang tayo, kanya-kanya tayo. Pagpunta natin doon sa Boraca, yung iba nasa tubig na, yung iba natutulog na lang, yung iba, kanya-kanya na, di ba? So, ganun din sa audit. Kailangan, merong plano, there is a There is an order, there are steps or procedures to follow para hindi ma, hindi tayo magkamali, hindi maging uh, mawala, yung para mapunta na lang sa, uh, sa wala ang ating ginawa na no? pag nag-conduct tayo ng audit. So, ganun po yun. So, anyone, si, ano pa? Anyone from the class, ano pa kaya? Bakit kaya siya tinawag na systematic process? Yes po. Yes. Babe. Yung in addition lang din po, may sinusunod din po na established criteria para po ma-communicate yung result sa interested users po. Ay, sorry, sorry. Nakamute ako. All right. So, ulitin ko. So, that is correct, no? That is correct. Bakit? Kasi may established criteria na sinusunod si auditor. Ano yung established criteria na sinusunod ni auditor? Ito yung PSA standards. So, ano yung PSA standards? That stands for Philippine Standards on Auditing. So, yung established criteria na pinag-uusapan natin dito, itong established criteria na yan, that is different from the established criteria na nakalagay dito sa verbatim ni, audit, uh, ni auditing. So, pag-uusapan natin mamaya yung established criteria na sinabi dito sa, uh, sa definition ng auditing. Pero itong established criteria naman na nandito, na sinusunod naman ni auditor, 
yun yung Philippine Standards on ODP. So habang tumatagal yung pag-aaral natin, pag-aaralan natin din yan, yung mga Philippine Standards on ODP. Kasi nung nasa accounting kayo, ang pinag-aaralan nyo, PAS naman. Philippine Accounting Standards. Saka Philippine uh, Financial Reporting Standards. Yun yung pinag-aaralan nyo dati. Ngayon, dito naman tayo bilang isang auditor. Pag-aaralan natin yan. Now, Balik, balik tayo doon sa verbatim. Hindi pa natin tatapos. Auditing nyo sa systematic process. So, alam na natin yon Of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences. Bakit kaya kailangan ni auditor ng evidences? Anyone from the class, bakit kailangan ni auditor ng evidences? Para may basis po siya. That's correct. So, tama si JJ. No? Para may basis. Bakit kailangan nung uh, basis na yon Para sa yung evidences? At para sa yung basis? So, ano yun? Ano yung uh, bakit nature nating mga auditor na maghanap ng ebidensya? Ano kaya yung purpose no? di ba Sinabi na ni JJ, para may basis. Para saan? Para saan yung basis? ba Para saan yung basis na yon Ano bang chinecheck? Ah, sige po, si John Vincent. Si John Vincent muna. <laughs> Sinabasa ko, sir, ako po. Sige po. Yes, okay, sir. Uh, sabi po si sir, ano, objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences. So, kaya kailangan po natin ng evidences para yung uh, aud audit, yung pag-audit natin is objective, hindi po subjective. Meaning, meaning po kasi ng objective, unbiased, tapos hindi po siya pwedeng i-deny na mali. So, kailangan ng evidences. That's correct. So, tama po yun. That's why we are collecting evidences to check or to to uh, to show to stakeholders that we are conducting audit very objectively. Kasi ang, ang evidences, hindi naman yun ang gagaling sa atin. It comes out naturally sa ibang sources. Diba? It could come out doon sa company, it could come out based sa ating own uh, inquiry and observation. It could come out from a third party. Nakukuha po ba? So tama po yan, sinabi ni John Vincent. Para maging objective ang pagkandak ng ating uh, audit. Paano, yun nasabi na, uh, paano ko nasabi na pwedeng lumabas ang ebidensya sa company? Let's say for example, mag-audit tayo ng... Uh, Mag-audit tayo ng cash, yung cash in bank. Ngayon, pag nag-audit tayo ng cash in bank, ano yung kailangan nating hanapin doon sa ating uh, client na company? Ang hanapin natin sa client na company, yung bank reconciliation statement, di ba? To check kung reconcile ba talaga yung nandoon sa kanilang books. Kung reconcile ba yung bank balance sa book balance. So tama yon. So, that is a form of evidence. Pero, tanong ko sa inyo, tanong ko sa inyo, class, is the bank reconciliation statement the best evidence uh, that you can obtain when auditing uh, a cash in bank? Yun ba yung pinaka-best na evidence na ma-obtain nyo kapag nagkakanda kayo ng audit ng cash in bank? Uh, type number three if yes. Type number four if no. So, type number 3 if yes, type number 4 if no. So, tama ba na yun yung pinaka-best evidence? So, nag-iisip. Nag-iisip pa ang mga estudyante ko. So, type number 3 if yes, kung yun yung best evidence. 4 naman kung no. Kung kayo yung auditor, pag-isipan natin maigi. Uh, yung bank reconciliation statement kaya na ginawa ni company, yun ba yung best evidence na ma-obtain ko kapag magkakanda ako ng audit of cash or cash in bank? So type number three if yes, type number four if no. So may nakita kong yes, may no, yes, no, yes, no. So any other opinion? Ayan, so... So, mas maraming no, mas maraming uh, nadadagdag yung yes. So, close ang laban, no? May yes, may no. 
Yes. So what? The answer. What's the answer? Is it really yes or is it really no? Bakit kaya? Bakit, y bakit yung iba yes? Bakit yung iba no? So, sirit na. The final answer. The answer here is no. Bakit kaya no siya? Bakit no? Kasi the evidence came from the company itself. Ang nag-produce nun, yung company. No? So, hihingin pa rin natin siya, it forms as an evidence. Para ma-check natin kung talagang reconcile. Pero tayo bilang auditor, hindi tayo agad-agad naniniwala sa binibigay sa atin ng client na company. Bakit? Kasi sila yung gumawa nun. Diba? Kapag sila ang gumawa nun, may tendency na pwede nilang i-alter, i-modify, or i-force balance. Now, para ma-verify natin kung tama yung evidence na gather natin doon sa bank reconciliation statement, pwede ba tayong humingi ng third-party evidence? Kanina tayo hihingi? Anyone from the class? Kanina tayo hihingi? Nakakuha na tayo ng evidence sa company, bank reconciliation statement. Gusto natin ma-verify, uh, tama ba yung nandoon sa bank balance? Saan tayo hihingi? Anyone from the class? Yes, John Vincent. Since And, ano po, since ano po siya, sir, uh, bank reconciliation, yung pwede pong hingi na third party is yung bank. That's correct. So, bank, no? So, tama yun. Ang isa na pwede natin makuha na ng evidence ay yung bank. So, I think may nag-raise pa ng isang hand. Uh, ano yung makukuhang evidence doon? Alright? So, anyone from the class, ano yung makukuha na evidence coming from bank? So, anyone from the class? Alright. Vanessa? Yes, Vanessa. Yes, Vanessa? Can you hear me, Vanessa? I think you're you're on mute. I think you're on mute. So Vanessa's ra raising her hand, but I think you're on mute. You can unmute yourself. All right. So while waiting for Vanessa, let's read some of the comments. So sabi ni Jessica, from the bank itself po, tama po yun, from the bank itself, di ba? Ano yung makukuha? Ano sabi naman ni Rex Reed? Bank statement. So, tama yun. Tam sabi din ni Vanessa, bank statement. So, tama yun. Bank statement. Meron pa tayong isa pang makukuha. Ano kaya yung isa pang makukuha natin? May, may iba pa ba? May, may isa pa tayong makukuha. Receipts of record. Uh, so, may, sab may sagot si uh, Jofe. Jofe, tama po ba? So, may sagot si Jofe, receipts of record. So, uh, I think receipts of record is also bank statement, no? So, invoice. Walang invoice si, ano, si bank. So, books of accounts. Books of accounts, yun yung, ano, yung books na nasa side ng company. So, ano yung makukuha natin? Ano yung makukuha natin kay bank? Hmm? Na evidence. So, maglalagay ako rito, ha? Lalagay ko muna dito. Ayan. So, evidence. Eh. So, one example Bank, di ba? Ano yung evidence na makukuha natin muna sa company? Bank. Ayan, bank recon. Bank recon kay company, di ba? Ano naman yung makukuha mo kay bank? Bank statement. Ayan yung makukuha natin kay bank. Ano pa yung isa natin makukuha kay bank na evidence? Ang tawag natin doon ay... Okay, so... Let me just check. Ayan. Okay. Ano pa yung isa natin makukuha kay bank? Ay, isa pa natin makukuha kay bank ay bank confirmation. So, may bank confirmation tayong tinatawag. So, isa yan sa evidence. Yung bank confirmation kasi may pirma yan nung uh, bank manager. So, pinipirmahan yun ng bank manager, yung bank confirmation signifying or sinasign yan na yung bank balance na nandito 
ay tama. Ito yung totoong bank balance. Yan yung dapat yung makita sa bank statement. Nakuha po ba? Yan yung dapat nyo rin makita doon sa unadjusted bank balance sa bank reconciliation statement. So, yan yung mga normal yung makikita sa kapag nagkakandak tayo ng uh, audit of cash in bank. So, ito yung mga na-obtain nating evidences. So, nagigets po ba? Alright. So, tama yun. So, imagine ninyo, verbatim pa lang ng auditing, medyo matagal na yung usapan natin. So, auditing is a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences regarding assertions about economic actions and events. So, tapos na tayo sa systematic process. Tapos na rin tayo sa evidences. Pero may tinutukoy doon. Evidences daw regarding assertion. So, ano yung assertion naman? Kailangan mapag-usapan natin kung ano ba yung assertion. So, anyone from the class, what is assertion? What is assertion? Anyone from the class? Can you, can you still hear me? I think Jean May is raising her hand. Ayun po, sir, yung, ano po, yung representations or yung claims po ng entity regarding po sa financial statements po ng isang entity. Like, for example, po yung accuracy, kung tama po ba yung mga amount po na nasa financial statement. That's correct, no? So, assertions, ayan na, pinaba ko lang, huwag kayo malito. Assertions is equal to FS representation. So, ang assertion daw pala ay FS representation. Sinong nagre-represent ng assertions? It is the management who represents the financial statements. So, para masabi natin, tama yung nire-represent ng management regarding financial statement, we have to gather evidences that properly reflects the assertions nung nasa financial statements. So, bibigyan ko kayo ng overview ng financial statement assertions. When you say assertion, you think of the word perceive. So, when, when you think of assertions, think of the word perceive. So, ulitin ko ulit, assertions is, equals to, is equal to perceive. So, what is perceived? Diba? So, tandaan nyo ito, yung perceived na, na acronym. So, perceived means presentation and disclosure. Presentation and disclosure. So, unang nirepresent ng company regarding their financial statement is the assertion of presentation and disclosure. Bakit kaya dapat nating uh, tignan or dapat tayo mag-gather ng evidences regarding presentation and disclosure assertion sa financial statement. Bakit kaya? So anyone from the class, bakit kaya kailangan tayo bilang auditor, isipin natin tayo si auditor, bakit natin kailangan maghanap ng ebidensya para sa presentation and disclosure dun sa financial statement? di ba? So, bakit hinahanapan natin yon ng ebidensya? So, anyone from the class, if you can still hear me, please press 5. Alright, so you, um, nakikinig pa naman lahat, no? So, tama yon. If you cannot hear me, please press 6. If you cannot hear me, please press 6. So, lahat talaga na naririnig ako kasi walang nag-press ng 6. So, anyone from the class, bakit kaya dapat nating i-check kung tayo yung auditor? So, I think Nicole Ann is raising her hand. So, yes, Nicole. Sir, to check po the accuracy po ng mga information na nakalagay po. Yes, that's correct. So, to check the accuracy ng information na nakalagay doon. So, Diba, kung titignan nyo, um, kailangan may proper presentation ng mga line account, uh, line items sa financial statement, diba? Kasi ibabangga natin siya doon sa past one, diba? Presentation and disclosure. Ito yun nasa ating accounting, presentation and 
disclosure. So, kung ano yung nasa past one, yung sinabi ng past one, dapat yun yung makita nyo doon sa, pres sa presentation and disclosure assertion na hinahanapan natin ng ebidensya. So, tama po, di ba? Ano pa? I think Vanessa is raising her hand. Or Dave. Is it Dave? Dave is raising his hand. Yes po sir. Para din po ma-test and ma-verify yung correctness ng financial statements in accordance to the accounting standards po. So, yes, to verify the correctness. To verify the fairness. So, sabihin natin fairness. Kasi bakit kaya fairness lang yung sinasabi natin? Kasi we're rendering an, an a reasonable assurance, not an absolute assurance. So, verify the fairness of the presentation in, in the FS. So, tama po yun. So, the verify the fairness of the presentation in the financial statement. So, sino pa ba? Meron pa po ba? I think Jean May is raising her hand kanina. Siguro, sir, kung ano po, magmamatch po yung mga evidences. Like, for example, kapag may evidence po regarding sa financial statements, kung marerefute niya po ba yung mga assertions o di kaya po magpo-prove na tama po yung mga evidence po na yun. Yes, tama yun, di ba? Kasi kapag naghanap tayo ng ebidensya, sabihin natin, mayroon nakalagay doon sa financial statement na sabihin natin, uh, equipment. May equipment na nandoon sa financial statement ang nakalagay 1 million pesos. Ngayon, i-check natin kung tama ba yung pagkaka-present nung equipment doon sa financial statement kasi ang nakalagay 1 million. Ngayon, syempre magagather tayo ng evidences, de ba? Ano yung hahanapin nating evidences? Yes, Hershey. Halimbawa, nag-audit tayo ng equipment. Ano yung hahanapin nating evidences kung tama yung presentation? I think her, she is raising her hand. Hello po. Yes po, yes. Sir, yung ano lang po, yung according po dun sa presentation and disclosure po, additional uh -huh. lang po. Uh, yes po, apa. Yung ano po, dapat i-ensure po na understandable yung pagkakapresent po ng information para mas maging um, understandable po or hindi magkakaroon ng conflict po sa users ng financial statements. And also din po to ensure the completeness po ng lahat ng information. Yes, di ba? So, di ba ano bang purpose ng, ano, ng accounting? Para mas madaling maintindihan ng mga users of the financial information. If we're using very technical uh, wordings or Tech, very technical terminologies. So, mahihirapan maintindihan ng mga users or stakeholders ng financial information yun nandun sa financial statement. So, kailangan aside from proper presentation and disclosure, dapat understandable siya sa mga stakeholders. Nakukuha po ba? Ngayon, balik ulit tayo dun sa, ano, sa may equipment. Ano yung dapat hanapin to check if the presentation and disclosure na nandoon sa financial statement for equipment, 1 million pesos. Uh, tama ba? Diba? So, it, ano nga hanapin natin? Hanapin natin yung accounting policy ng company. Ano ba yung accounting policy ng company regarding property, plant, and equipment? So, chinect natin yung accounting policy. So, kayo yung auditor, pahingi nga kami uh, entity one ng accounting policy nyo regarding property, plant, and equipment. So, tinignan natin. Ang nakalagay, ah, revaluation model po kayo. Bakit cost model yung nakalagay dyan sa, ano, sa financial statements nyo? So, hindi po natin to um, dapat ganito yung presentation. Kasi revaluation model po yung ginagamit nyo, not cost model. So, we have to revalue your equipment or your property, plant, and equipment at the end of every year. So, we have to remeasure. Remeasure tayo ng remeasure. Di ba po? So, ganun yung gagawin natin. Kung tayo yung auditor, we have to check if the line items in the financial statement are properly presented. 
So, tama po yun. Alright. So, balik ko tayo sa assertion. Tapos na tayo sa letter P, no? So, well, let's go now with letter E. What's letter E? Existence or occurrence. So, what is existence or occurrence? Bakit kaya natin kailangan i-check or mag-gather ng evidences regarding existence or occurrence assertions doon sa financial statement? Diba? Yun kasi yung nare-represent ng, ano, ng management, yung financial statement. Bakit kailangan natin i-check yung existence or occurrence assertion doon sa financial statement? Anyone from the class? Yes, John Harold. Yes, John Harold. Can you hear me? Yes po, ay nakamit pala. <laughs> um, ano, kailan po natin i-check yung existence and or occurrence ng transaction ng na naganap dun sa ano, sa company para maano natin, para para ma-check na yung assertions. Um kasi kung minsan yung ibang yung ibang ano, gumagawa ng financial statements ay nilalagyan lang yung ano, yung nilalagyan lang or Minamanipulate yung transaction po. Yun po. So tama yun, di ba? Yung iba kasi minamanipulate nila, ina-alter yung uh, financial statements, ginagawa ng uh, wala naman talagang ganito, nilalagay sa financial statement. So I think G Gabriel is also raising his hand. So can I hear yes, some words uh, from Gabriel? Dagdag lang din po dun. Yun nga po, uh, ina -avoid, para ma-avoid po yung pag-manipulate and paggawa ng mga fake transactions, for example. So, uh, kaya may existence and occurrence to make sure na yung assets or yung liabilities is nag-e-exist talaga at a given date and na-record yung tra transaction at nangyari po talaga siya. Para yes. din po ito maiwasan yung overstatement ng mga financial statement elements. So, kaya meron po tayong existence or occurrence po. That's correct. So, kaya yun yung purpose ng existence or occurrence para ma-check kung talagang yung mga nando nakapresent eh nag exist talaga, di ba? No? So, or kung merong, meron ba talagang liabilities? Meron ba talagang assets doon na ganitong, ganitong amount? Meron ba talagang receivables na ganitong amount? So, tama po yun. I think JJ is also raising his hand. Yep. Also, an additional po to know the motive of the company in case that they manipulate the existence and occurrences of um, assets and liabilities. Because some companies, uh, you can instantly see if they are trying to make their profit look uh, smaller or bigger depending on their goal. Parang route lang po as an auditor. I see. So, ang ganda ng explanation naman doon ni JJ. So, parang bigat naman nun, motive, no? So, to know the, the motive, parang, what a word doon? <laughs> to know the motive of the company or of the management. Kasi, yung ibang company nga, so, tama din yung sinasabi ni JJ, yung iba, pinapaganda yung FS. So, anong tawag doon sa pagpapaganda ng FS? Window dressing. So, makikita niyo yung window, di ba? Kapag nilagyan natin ng kortina, gumanda ba yung ano, bintana? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So, kung gumanda ang bintana, um, mas maganda ba magpa-picture or mag-selfie kaysa sa walang kortina? Yes, yes po. Sir. Oh, yes, Instagram. Diba? So, gan Wait. Yes, Instagramable, di ba? So, ganun din sa financial statement. Kung gusto nyo mas kaakit-akit yung financial statement, you have to dress your uh, financial statement that uh, looks like it's more profitable than ever, no? So, ganun. Halimbawa, uh, profitable naman siya, 1 million lang. Pero gusto nyo, mas makaakit ng investor. So, ginawa yung 5 million. So, that's window dressing. So, anong ginawa sa window dressing? Yung profit the, the, the following year, nirecord nyo na agad as profit the current year. So, hinihila nyo. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung bintana, di ba? Yung bintana, kapag inayos nyo yung kortina, tinatali nyo, nilalagay nyo sa gilid o kaya nilalagay nyo sa gitna. So, ganun din yung window dressing sa financial statement. Hihilahin mo yung kortina kasi yung related na profit for that year, ipinapasok mo doon sa year na gusto mo siyang makita. 
So parang it's like you're dressing nga, uh, window dressing the financial statement. So hindi yan acceptable sa atin bilang mga auditor, di ba? Bakit? Kasi hindi niya nire-represent properly yung financial statement assertion, di ba? Yung FS assertion na ginagawa ni management. So, anong gagawin natin? We have to check the existence or occurrence. So, paano natin ma-check yung existence or occurrence? So, let's say, for example, balik tayo dun sa equipment. Paano natin malalaman kung yung equipment na nasa financial statement ay nag -e exist na talaga? Dapat hanapan natin kung meron siyang physical asset. Diba? So, kung tayo si auditor, sasabihin natin, Kung may equipment po kayo sa ano sa financial statement niyo 1 million daw yung halaga parang ang liliit naman po ng mga asset niyo rito nasaan na po yung equipment na worth 1 million So anong gagawin niya bilang auditor So you can a uh, an observation or an inquiry So pupunta kayo doon sa physical plant i-check niyo makikita niyo yung equipment ah nandito pala yung equipment that worth 1 million pesos so eto na yun so di ba nakita niyo na so you test the existence the physical existence of the asset so ibabangga niyo pa siya sa invoice yung purchase invoice ng equipment to to verify if the amount uh, presented in the financial statement corresponds to the cost uh, of purchase na nandun sa invoice. So, doon yung masasabi na, ah, oo nga, this really exists. This asset really exists. So, yan ang meron sa ating existence or occurrence. Ikatlo, we have letter R. Ano kaya yung R? Ayun, rights and obligation. So, ano naman ang rights and obligations assertion? Anyone from the class, what is rights and obligations assertion? So let me check. I think someone's raising. Uh, Kathleen. So si Kathleen muna. And the next is Erica. Yes, Kathleen. So yung assertion of rights and obligation po is para malaman po if all assets and liabilities na nasa financial statement is totoong pagmamayari po ng company. And the company has the ownership rights to use those assets po. Yes, yeah, so tama yun, di ba? To check if the assets present in the financial statements, meron ba talagang rightful claims yung uh, management, yung company doon, di ba? So tama yun, di ba? Sabihin natin, oh may equipment, sa inyo ba yan? Di ba? Sa inyo ba yan? Kayo ba may ari? Yes, opo, kami may ari niya, may purchase invoice nga kami. Ayan, oh, kikita nyo. So na-establish na natin yung rights, no? Rights assertion ng company doon sa sa equipment. Another case naman, oh may equipment po kayo. Uh, may rights ba kayo diyan? May ay ano lang namin yan, nirerentahan lang namin yan. So eh bakit po nakalagay sa financial statement? Eh kasi capital lease to eh. Uh, uh, 75% ng economic life niya uh, sa amin siya. Eh. So uh, substance over form, applying substance over form sa amin to technically. So we are using, we are having the control of the physical asset. So uh, we can record it. Diba? So doon, establish naman yung rights. Diba? So ganun yun. Ano pa? Aside from that, Erica. Yes, Erica. Hello po. Yes po. Sir, yes, yung po. sa rights po, nasab nasabi na po niya, yung sa ano na lang po yung sabihin ko, yung sa obligations. Alright, sige po, sige. Yung sa obligations po, kung yung mga liabilities na binayaran or babayaran, is obligation po ba talaga ng business itself at hindi personal na liabilities po ng owner ng business? Yes, that's, cor uh, that's correct, di ba? So, kung yung mga liabilities ba, na ba talaga na yon eh... Mayroon ba talagang obligation doon yung uh, company? Baka kasi may liabilities na nakapresent sa financial statement, pero fully paid na pala siya. Ang nangyari pala, kaya nakapresent pa rin doon kasi nagkamali ng application ng payment. Imbis na i-apply ng accountant sa liabilities, uh, in-apply nila as outright expense. So nagkaroon sila ng expense, additional expense sa financial sa income statement. 
eh, related yun sa bayad doon sa loan, sa obligation. So, supposedly, dapat fully paid na sa financial statement records yung, yung obligation, pero nag, nandoon pa din dahil nga nagkamali ng application. So, isa yun sa mga nakikita natin bilang auditor. Kasi sasabihin natin, iti-check natin yung rights and obligations assertion. O, oh, may loan po kayo dyan. Uh, may obligation pa po ba talaga kayo? So, sabihin nila, ah, wala na kaming loan. Diba? Sabihin ng company, wala na kaming loan. Uh, nabayaran na namin yan. So, syempre kayo bilang auditor, tatanungin nyo yung sarili nyo, tatanungin nyo rin yung, comp yung company, bakit may loan pa rin po nan nandito sa FS kung bayad na? So, iti-check ninyo yung transaction, ayo o nga, bayad na. Pero mali yung journal entry na ginawa. Kaya nandito pa rin, nakalagay pa rin sa financial statements yung obligation. So, that will be your, uh, ang tawag dito, that will be your findings pagdating doon sa rights and obligations assertion. So, to check if assets, uh, the company has right over assets and the company has obligations, existing obligations over its liabilities. So, yun po yung meron sa rights and obligations. Ano pa? So, tapos na tayo sa tatlo, no? Number four. What is C? Completeness. So, bakit natin tinitest? or tinecheck yung completeness assertion sa financial statement na nire-represent ni management. Yes po. Yes, Nicole. Nicole? Completeness po, kailangan po siya to check po na every item or transactions po na nangyari po within the accounting period is kasama po lahat dun sa financial statement. Yes, yeah, so tama rin yun, no? I think na nakita ko din si Princess. So parang hindi ko pa naririnig si Princess. Yes, Princess? Sir, parehas lang. Pero siguro yun sa akin, example na lang po. Yes, yeah, sige po. Yung kunwari po sa inventory, di ba po minsan nagpapabenta po yung company, yung sa consignment po. So yung sa completeness po, siguro po dapat add pa rin po sa inventory nyo yung nasa consignment habang hindi pa siya nabibenta sa given period na gano'n. Yes, tama yun, no? So, tama yung sinabi ni Nicole. Tama yung sinabi ni Princess. So, sabi ni Nicole, sa theory si Nicole, sabi niya, to check kung yung mga transactions ba talaga po ay nailagay doon sa proper period. So, syempre, uh, kailangan, para masabing complete, dapat lahat na i-record, na isama sa record. ba diba? So, ganun din yung sinabi ni Princess. Application naman yung kay Princess. Sa uh, consignment. Uh, kapag kinonsign, may entry si consignor sa kasi consignee. Ano yung kay entry ni consignor? Meron siyang shipments to consignee. So, nailabas sa inventory. Pero at the end of the fiscal year, dapat lahat ng nakakonsigned inventory isasama ulit ni consignor. Bakit niya isasama? Kasi... Yung ownership niya doon sa consigned goods, eh siya pa rin naman, nakastablish pa rin sa kanya. So, to, uh, to satisfy the completeness assertion doon sa financial statement, dapat isama natin yung uh, mga consigned goods na nandoon sa kay consignee, ilalagay natin sa libro ni consignor pabalik. So, just to satisfy the completeness. So, imagine niyo pag in-audit natin, oh, punta tayo dito ha, sa consigned goods muna tayo. Pag in-audit natin yung consigned goods, may nasasatisfy tayong madami. Una, ang nasasatisfy natin yung completeness assertion. Bakit? Kasi isasama natin pabalik yung mga consigned goods na nandoon kay consignee. Ano pa yung uh, nasasatisfy natin na uh, assertion? rights and obligation. Kasi, yung consigned goods na yon ang rightful owner, si consignor. Ano pa? Yung presentation and disclosure. Kasi anong sabi ni presentation and disclosure? Uh, sabi doon ni PAS2, di ba? Sabi ni PAS2, inventories. Pati ni, I, ni PFRS, di ba? PFRS 15, revenue from contracts with customers, ang sabi nila, lahat ng consigned goods pagmamayari ni consignor. Therefore, you have to include that 
sa financial statement ni consignor. So, pag nag-audit pala tayo ng consigned goods inventory, marami tayong na-check na na FS assertion. Completeness, rights and obligation, presentation and disclosure. So, parang parang nagbato ka ng bato o kaya ng barbecue stick tapos na natamaan mo yung tatlong ibon ng isang beses lang, di ba? Binato mo yung barbecue stick. Pagkatapos mo kumain ng barbecue, natamaan yung tatlong maya. So, you're striking three birds at a one hit. So, ganun yung ginagawa natin sa auditing, di ba? Nag-audit kayo ng isang item, nasasatisfy nyo na yung ilang assertions. So, yun po yung meron. Ano pa? Last. Last assertion. So, gawin ulit natin itong black. Alright. So, last assertion tayo. Letter V. Valuation and allocation. So, ano namang meron sa valuation and allocation? So, anyone from the class, if you can hear me, please press 6. Please press 6. Alright. So, marami pa rin nakikinig, no? So, this serves as your attendance kasi pumapasok to sa ating email kung sino, di ba? So, makikita ko rito kung sino yung mga active. Alright. Okay. So, anyone from the class, ano po yung valuation and allocation assertion? At bakit kaya kailangan natin mag-obtain ng evidence regarding this type of assertion? Ano kaya yung valuation and allocation? Hindi ko siya alam. So, pwedeng paki-explain kaya sa akin. Yes, Gab. Dito naman pa sa valuation and allocation assertion, it, uh, para po ma-make sure na yung mga items na included or yung mga components sa financial statement, for example, yung asset liabilities, is na proper is properly classified po siya within the statement. And at the same time, uh, nagkakaroon din po ng accurate valuation regarding dun sa mga line items. Like for example po, yung sa inventors na sinabi niyo po kanina. So di ba po yun nga, PAS2 yung guidelines na kailangan i-follow doon para sa valuation, which is po yung LCNRV or yung, or yung lower of cost or not realizable value. So meron po tayong accuracy and val uh, uh, allocation, uh, valuation and allocation assertion pa. Yes, that's correct. So tama yung sinabi ni Gap. Yung, uh, yung valuation and allocation assertion, nasa satisfy yan kapag nire-remeasure -re natin or nire-revalue -re natin or uh, chine-check natin yung proper, proper valuation ng mga account items na nakapresent sa financial statement. Sabihin natin, sa cash. Punta muna tayo sa cash. Normally, yung cash, ano yung mga nire-revalue -re na cash or nire-remeasure at the end of the uh, financial year, yung mga forex, di ba? Foreign currency denominated cash. So, anong ginagawa natin? At the end of every year, kailangan i-check natin kung magkano na ba yung exchange rate netong mga US dollars natin sa bank. So, syempre, kasi kung last year, 49 pesos lang is to $1, tapos this year, December 31, 2021, 52 pesos na. Tama ba na 49 pesos pa rin yung basis natin or 52 pesos na? Revalue po to 52 pesos. Yes. Yeah, so, dapat i-revalue natin to 52 pesos kasi yun yung properly reflecting, yun yung tama, mas accurate, mas relevant na information uh, na dapat i-present sa financial statement. So, that so that will satisfy the valuation uh, assertion sa financial statement, di ba? Ano pa? Ano pa yung binavaluate natin or nire-revalue? Receivables, di ba? How do we uh, revalue receivables at the end of the year? Yes, Sophia. Yes, Sophia, how do we revalue receivables? Can you hear me, Sophia? I think you're on mute. So I think you're on mute. So anyone from the class, uh, paano natin nare-revalue yung receivables or mini-measure, subsequent measurement? So yun yung term sa uh, accounting. How do we measure subsequently the receivables? Anong sabi ng uh, PFRS 9, financial instrument? Ano kayang sabi ng PFRS 9, financial instrument sa pag-revalue ng financial instrument na receivable? 
Diba? Nire-revalue natin siya at amortized cost. Naalala pa ba yun? So, we re we remeasure or we measure subsequently the, receiv the receivables at amortized cost. Nakukuha po ba? Eh, yung mga ordinary receivables, like trade receivables. How do we um, measure subsequently the accounts receivable or trade receivables? We measure it at the end of every year at its gross amount less allowance for doubtful accounts. So, net realizable value. So, tama yun, di ba? Yung mga accounts receivable, we measure it at its net realizable value. Nakukuha po ba? Uh, how about inventory? Sabi kanina ni Gab. So, how do we measure inventory? LCNRV po. Yes. Lower of cost or net realizable value. That is under pass 2, di ba? So, lower of cost or net realizable value. Eh, how about kapag SME? Paano minimeasure ang inventory kapag SME? Siyempre, iba na yung treatment natin kung tayo yung auditor ng isang entity na SME. So, ano sabi ng uh, standards under SME? So, we measure inventory at lower of cost or net realizable value pa rin. Kasi yun din, pareho sila. Eh, paano kung micro entity ka? So, you use PFRS for, for small entities. Ano sabi ng PFRS for small entities? You measure inventory at lower of cost or market rule. So, hindi lower of cost or net realizable value. Lower of cost or market rule kay uh, PFRS for small entities. So, ganun yun. So, kung tayo yung auditor, kailangan alam na alam natin lahat ng PFRS. So, Pag-aaralan din natin yan kapag nandun tayo sa auditing problems. Ngayon kasi auditing theory tayo. So, binibigyan ko lang kayo ng idea. So, these are the financial statement assertions. So, when you think of the assertions, you think of the word perceive. Presentation and disclosure, existence or occurrence, rights and obligation, completeness, valuation, and allocation. Ito yung nire-represent ng management. Paano natin masasatisfy lahat ng assertion kung tama? we gather evidences. So, yun yung sinasabi ng auditing verbatim. Auditing is a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences regarding assertions about economic actions and events. Ano pa? To ascertain, so to ascertain, so to ascertain the degree of correspondence. So, to, degree, uh, to ascertain the degree of correspondence between, so between daw, between those assertions, ayan yung assertions kanina, and established criteria. So, dito tayo, dito muna tayo sa established criteria. Between those assertions, kaya daw tayo nag-gather ng evidence, Kasi para daw ma-check yung degree of correspondence between those assertions and established criteria. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na established criteria na iba sa established criteria na dito binanggit natin sa systematic process. Kasi yung established criteria na nandito, ito yung Philippine Standards of Auditing. Pero yung established criteria na sinabi sa verbatim, ano naman yun? So anyone from the class, what is the established criteria na tinutukoy dito sa verbatim ni auditing? Anyone? Anyone from the class? Yes po. Yes. Uh, sige, Erika naman. Erika. Yes, Erika. Yes, lang po. Sige po, sige po. Ito po yung mga criteria na malalaman yung basis po ng mga assertions po na nabanggit po. Alright. Okay. So, eto ha. Meron tayong assertions. Ano kaya yung criteria na yon? Sige, sasabihin ko na sa inyo kung ano yung criteria. Yung criteria na tinutukoy dito, yung established criteria. So, ayusin ko lang to. Established criteria. Ito yung mga Philippine Financial Reporting Frameworks. Ano yung tatlong reporting framework na ginagamit natin that 
serves as established criteria para masatisfy or ma-check kung tama yung assertion. Ano yun? Naalala pa po ba? Anyone from the class, naalala pa po ba? Yes, Kathleen. Yes po. Anyone? Generally accepted accounting standards po or GAAP. Yes, generally accepted accounting standards or generally account, uh, accepted accounting principles. Eh, gusto ko ma-expound itong GAAP na to. Ano yung tatlong klase ng GAAP na sinusunod natin? Ano yung tatlong klase ng GAAP na sinusunod natin? So, ayan, lalagay ko na dito, ha? Okay, yan. Number two. Number three. Tatlo yung GAAP na sinusunod natin or reporting framework. Anyone from the class? Yes, Adrian. Yes, Adrian. Try lang po, sir. Number Sige. one, PES, tapos PFRS, tapos IFRIC po ba? Yes, that's correct. PAS, PFRS, IFRIC. Isa lang yun. So, mag -isa, isa lang lahat yan. Ang tawag natin dyan, full PFRS. So, yan yung isa sa ating Uh, ginagamit na established criteria. So, tama pala si Adrian, no? Kaso, isa lang yon Yung, yung PAS na yan, PFRS, IFRIC na yan, uh, full PFRS yon So, ano yung ano? Ano pa yung pang dalawa sa, pang sa kapangatlo? Yung pangalawa at pangatlo. So, meron tayong full PFRS. Ano yung pangalawa? Ano naman yung pangatlo? Anyone from the class? So, tama yun. Full PFRS yun ha. Unang reporting framework or established criteria na ginagamit natin, ang tawag full PFRS. Basta kapag binanggit yung PAS, PFRS, IFRI, full PFRS yun. Ano yung pangalawa? Naalala po ba? Alright. So, sirit na. Sige, yung pangalawa ay PFRS for small and medium-sized entities. So, yun po yung pangalawang established criteria na pwede nating i-reference para i-compare doon sa assertions. ba? Diba? Ano yung pangatlo? Ano naman yung pangatlo? PFRS PFRS for small entities. Nakukuha po ba? So, PFRS for small entities. So, so tama rin si Marens, ba? Diba? So, sabi ni Marens, pass PFRS. So that is what you called full PFRS. So ano yung mga established criteria na, gina, na pinagbabasehan natin? We have the full PFRS, PFRS for SMEs, saka PFRS for small entities. Etong tatlong ito, habang nag-aaral tayo ng auditing problems, Iko-compare natin to. So, para alam natin, habang ino-audit natin yung, sabihin natin, ino-audit natin yung cash, paano ba pinipresent yung cash under full PFRS? Paano ba pinipresent yung cash under SME? Paano pinipresent ang cash under small entity? Ganun din, pag-receivable, pag-inventory, property plot and equipment, so on and so forth. So, pag-aaralan natin to. So, ayan, patapos na tayo sa verbatim ng auditing. Auditing is a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidences regarding assertions about economic actions and events to a certain the degree of correspondence daw between those assertions, ito yung assertion, and the established criteria. So yun yung established criteria. Ano pa yung sinasabi ni, uh, ng definition ni auditing? And communicating the results to interested users. So, yan yung full verbatim ni ODT. So, yan yung sinasabi. Bakit kailangan i-communicate daw yung results? So, why do we need to communicate the results to interested users? Yan yung sinasabi ko kung bakit magkapatid si accounting sa kasi ODT. Ano ba yung definition ni accounting? Tatlo yung definition natin kay accounting. Ba? Tatlo yung definition natin kay accounting. We have the shortest definition. We have the oldest definition. And then we have the latest definition. Ano yung shortest definition ng accounting? 
accounting is the language of the business. Nag-agree po ba kayo? That accounting yes, is the language of the business? Yes. If it's the language of the business, then we have to communicate the results to the interested users. Kasi yun yung language of the business. So, the shortest definition satisfies the communication process between the preparers of the financial statements and the intended users of the financial statements. Ano naman yung oldest definition, yung pinakalumang definition ng accounting? So, ano po yun? Accounting is an art of recording, classifying, summarizing in a significant manner in terms of money, transactions, and events which are in part at least of financial characters and interpreting the results thereof. So kung, ma kung mapapansin nyo yun sa pinakadulo, interpreting the results thereof. So ini-interpret daw natin yung results. So that in that way, we are communicating the results to the interested users. So, di ba? Kung mapapansin nyo, yung shortest saka long, uh, shortest saka oldest definition, pareho sila. They are moving towards communication of the results to the interested users. Ano naman yung latest definition ng accounting? Ito alam na alam nyo to kasi ito yung tinuturo sa inyong Libro, what is the latest definition of accounting? Anyone from the class? So, bibigyan ko kayo ng hint. Accounting is a service activity. Yes, Gab? Sir, yun ba yung parang yung a uh, definition by uh, AAA, sir? Yes. Ayun din. Yung nag-define ng auditing natin, sila rin yung nag-define ng latest definition. Diba? Kasi po yung naalala ko pa sa AAA, sir, yung sabi nila, accounting refers to the process of identifying, measuring, and communicating economic information to per permit informed judgment and decisions by users of the information po. Yes, so that's correct also, di ba? Sabi, sa sabi ng American Accounting, information, kung titignan sa pinakadulo, para daw may communicate pa din, di ba? Meron pang isa. Ano yung isa? Yes, Nico. Yung mga gumagamit ng libro ni Ma'am Zenaida noon, di ba? No first year. Pagkakatanda ko po, accounting is a service activity. Its function is to provide quantitative information, primarily financial in nature po. Yes, that's correct. So ano yung latest na sinabi? Accounting is a service activity. Its function is to provide quantitative information. Primarily financial in nature, di ba? That is intended, di ba, to be useful in making economic decision. So, intended to be useful daw siya in making economic decision. So, para makagawa ng economic decision, sound economic decision, kailangan alam natin yung results ng operation. So, kailangan may communicate sa stakeholders do sa users of the financial information yung results ng business iba by way of preparing financial statements so ganun din siya with uh, auditing kung ano yung nakita ninyo bilang auditor na findings kung ano yung nakita ninyo you have to communicate the results to the interested users kung tama ba fair ba yung fs Kayo auditor, yes. Sabi nyo, yes, fair naman yung FS. Diba? Yung iba may sinasabi, yes, fair yung FS, except for, diba? Yung iba, sinasabi, ay, hindi naman fair ang FS. Yung iba, sinasabi ng auditor, ay, no comment. Diba? So, eto, mapag-aaralan natin yan habang tumatagal. So, makikita natin kung ano-ano yung mga klase ng opinion na sasabihin ng auditor pagdating sa financial statement. So, we're done with the full verbatim of the auditing. Nakukuha po ba? So, anyone from the class, why do we need to communicate the results? Kasi magbibigay tayo ng opinion, di ba? Auditors give opinion. So, ano yung binibigay nating opinion? Assurance. So, we give opinion by way of giving assurance. So, yung assurance ba na yan? Is that an absolute assurance or reasonable assurance? Is that an absolute assurance or reason? Yes, Jean. Yes, Jean May. Reasonable assurance lang po, sir. Yes, reasonable assurance lang. Bakit kaya siya naging reasonable assurance lang? Kasi reasonable... po, sir. Uh... Yes po, yes. 
Kasi po sir, parang may, ano po, sa, sa pag-audit po ng mga auditor, may mga tinatawag po tayong inherent limitations po. Na kung saan po, hindi po nila nadidetect yung mga uh, material misstatements. So, ang mga nagbibigay lang po nila is yung opinion po and na-ensure din po nila kung yung financial statement po is free from uh, material misstatement po. That's correct, di ba? Because of the inherent limitations na sinasabi, di ba? Hindi tayo sure if the FS is really correct. It's really perfect. Hindi natin sinasabi na, ah, your FS is correct. 100% correct. Your FS is perfect. It's close to perfection. It's very beautiful. It's a very beautiful FS. Wala tayong ginaganon. Wala tayong sinasabing ganon. Ang sinasabi lang natin, your financial statements fairly presents. ba? Diba? In all material respects. Yun yung sinasabi natin bilang auditor. Kasi what we only give is reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance. So, another term ng reasonable assurance. Ano yung another term ng reasonable assurance? So, para malaman, what is uh, reasonable assurance? Another term ng reasonable assurance. Anyone from the class? May nababasa po ba? Reasonable assurance is also known as... Yes, Erica. Yes, Erica. Reasonable assurance... Oh, compliance, hindi. Hindi siya. So, another one. Another one. Anong ibig sabihin ng reasonable assurance? Another term. Pag hindi natin, yung naki Pag hindi natin nakita yung reasonable assurance, ang ating dapat hanapin is high but not absolute assurance. Diba? So, when we render an assurance or, or when we give an opinion sa financial statements, we are giving a reasonable assurance. Pag sinabi natin reasonable assurance, that is a high insurance. Pero, hindi to the point na absolute assurance yon. Kasi ano tayo, auditor, we give the best opinion to our clients, to companies. So therefore, the assurance we are giving to our clients or to the companies are high assurance. High assurance but not absolute assurance. So high but not absolute. So pag sinabing high but not absolute, that is tantamount to reasonable assurance. Kasi papayag ba kayo, kayo yung auditor? Magiging auditor kayo in the future, magiging kayo yung CPA. Tapos mamaliitin kayo, ay hindi pala kayo kayang magbigay ng high assurance. Ano pang purpose nyo bilang auditor? Diba? So, hindi tayo papayag. Kasi yung reasonable assurance na binibigay natin, high assurance yan. Hindi nga lang absolute assurance. Kasi meron tayong inherent limitation. So, next meeting, pag-aaralan natin yung mga inherent limitation na yun. So, thank you so much, class, for uh, joining this class discussion. And then next meeting, let's discuss the continuation of auditing theory. Nakukuha po ba? I will upload this video sa YouTube so you can rewatch it again. You can uh, check it, compare it with the books that you're reading now. Kung meron tayong malibang nasabi or tama, nag agree kayo. So okay lang. And then if you have questions, you can free to chat me to our group chat or you can chat me personally. So thank you so much, class. Have a good evening and have a good dinner. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you